father always had the attitude that you need to learn the business from the bottom up. And uh, so but it's a good way to do it. So I've done everything within the business that we've ever done. My father always had me and my brother cleaning uh, toilets, waste baskets, all that stuff when we were kids. Being involved in a uh, multi-generational organization has a, a lot of benefits in that way. And I uh, got to see what my uh, grandfather uh, did, what my father followed him with, and uh, how he trained me, and uh, what I was able to uh, selectively keep the good and reject the bad as he encouraged me to do, and uh, then uh, adapt the business to the ever-changing marketplaces. You know, we've been here over 60 years, so we've been from electromechanical to now the Internet of Things. So we've seen technology evolve. We know most of our customers, their whole career. Publicly traded companies, they look at quarter to quarter, you know, and we look at longevity. We look at the decisions we make right now are for the long haul. Every decision has meaning, has, has value. When I started working here, I was cutting grass when I was 12. So the guys that were working then are still working now. So they're like uncles and aunts to me. So it's easy to go in, even if I feel stupid about asking a question, to, to have the, the support here to, to do that. So I think working with family is amazing. You know, you're not just a number. You know, you're a face. You know, they know your family. They care about you. And I think that spreads to our customer base as well. And so it's just a tremendous atmosphere. It's refreshing, uh, you know, especially in times like they are now. The business that I began in in 78 is quite different in uh, 2020 than it was back then. Everything has changed pretty dynamically. Temple Incorporated, we provide traffic solutions to city and states in the Southeast United States. Well, anything you see at the intersections, what we provide, anything from the cabinet to the detection, to the signals, to the push buttons, anything and everything you see at the intersection, we provide. We learned a lot from my father. You know, his motto was, don't sell what you can't service. We started manufacturing to support what we were selling. And uh, we would have customers that couldn't get it from our traditional manufacturers. So, said, oh, we can do that. But we do not go around trying to find out, okay, what do we, uh, we got to support our manufacturing business. No, we are supporting our sales business. You know, we have a warehouse, we have an ITS lab, we have a traffic signal lab. So with everything that we have, we're able to really come alongside the customer and help them out. Since we maintain the city of Decatur, you know, we feel their pains, we see what they see, and it makes us better able to help them. This is the new generation coming in, Forrest and G. Blake, and they're driving that aspect of it. New blood, new youth, new ideas. They're not afraid of technology. This is our sub-assembly department here at Temple Incorporated. This facility was built in 2006. We've got some years behind our belts, but what you'll see here is stations that are, that are made for building files and assemblies that go into a final product. So if you were to open up a cabinet assembly at an intersection, you'd see a lot of metal boxes. And so what you see here is one of the boxes that are inside the cabinet. Yes, yeah, so this is the output file. And the way that we assemble an output file, it's a collection of 11 different harnesses that we put in there. Yes, each red, yellow, green uh, has its own little input output and the controller tells which one to do. So this is just you know, really converting DC to AC. It's a much more modular system uh, that's supposed to be more technician friendly. With testing each component, major component that goes in the cabinet, we actually end up testing twice. So we take the most complicated assemblies, run them through a good test, and we end up doing it twice. So we, we like to hang our hat on quality. And so with that investment of time is, is important to us. The main goal of this is to isolate any problems from going downstairs into final quality sure. So this is a very important aspect of our production manufacturing. Whenever we build a cabinet, if we are provided with the intersection details or a specification that requires a certain configuration, this is where we do that on the prints where we build the cabinet by downstairs. We saw what Steve does upstairs where he takes the plan set and he puts it on paper and then it comes down here and we build it. Well, Richard is testing the theory that it works. So we get that and, and a lot of times we'll get pretty complex intersections put together. We don't know all the time whether or not uh, it will end up going until we test. And so that's what Richard's doing. He inputs all of the data from Steve's prints into the controller and he runs it and he makes sure that it works. This is a Applied Information School Zone assembly. We've got John running a quality check on it. 
John's head of our Caltrans and ITS quality department. But this cabinet is for agencies who are looking to manage their school zone systems better. For a full intersection worth of equipment with procurement and everything, the entire process, about three months. It takes about three months to get everything assembled and be the one-stop shop, which sounds like a long time, but you know, it's complicated stuff. The good thing when you come to us, we're gonna put everything in there for you and we're gonna make sure it's running and working for you. All right, so this is our final assembly area of production, and we're doing everything here from our Caltrans cabinets that we saw upstairs to our NEMA cabinets, which are seen in a lot of local areas as well. We also have uh, ITS type cabinets that are powering cameras, ethernet switches, and communications devices that report back to a traffic management center. This is actually through applied information. This is a Glance web server page. Uh, they have many tiers of products that they offer, and this is one of the ones that we have here set up. So we have a monitoring station for Decatur, Alabama here, where we can monitor the video footage uh, live in the field. We have a radio network set up here as well. Uh, we can also monitor many different forms of detection here. Uh, so we have some TV set up, a good interface, and a good network here. Uh, we also have some maps on the uh, TVs here for our live communications in the field. So we have a radio network, about 30 intersections total, and uh, we can keep a live look on everything that way. And then behind me here, we have a computer station set up where we can monitor field devices that are actually telling us the health reports from intersections all throughout the Southeast, uh, many different territories there. Here we're in the main warehouse where we stock most of our major traffic components from the signal heads to the LEDs and even the mounting hardware. We also use this as a staging area for the traffic signals because with each state, the signals might be a different configuration. So we will build those to our customers' needs. I think when they see that we do a lot more than have just a guy in a truck, we mean business. We're here for a long time. And we've got the, the facilities to back it up. Being a long-term company and multi-generational and that uh, you live and die by relationships. And if, if I leave you hanging with a problem, uh, that's not much of a relationship. <laughs> and you're not going to feel really good about me. So we, we try to uh, work as, as well as we can with, with those that need assistance and, and to help them. Uh, so it's, uh, it's always been an emphasis here. Brian Mulligan's been around the industry for a long time. So we knew him, knew of him, we knew his track record. So it was easy decision to decide to hook your wagon up to Brian Mulligan and whatever he was doing. You knew it was going to be interesting, if not successful. I had a partnership with Planet Information for seven years. And to think about where we were when we first spoke with them to where we are now, we've put out 10,000 products in the field but together. We've managed probably several dozen projects together. Flight information is very special to me. Our relationship, you know, started like a lot of relationships. We just were having a communication problem with a school flasher and applied information helped us. And then where it's grown into now, it's been an exciting ride. First of all, we had one specific problem and then he came and provided a solution better than anything we'd seen in the marketplace and uh, accomplished everything the customer wanted to see. And then just in conversation with him, we started talking about emergency vehicle preemption. And he said, oh, we can do, yeah, we can apply that, you know, applied information. And so we just started brainstorming and uh, it, it was just at the right moment. And within a very short time, he had come up with the, really the, the most sophisticated preemption system that we'd seen, which was more than a preemption system because it was also incorporating the other things that he was doing. I remember they came and said, hey, if a customer asks, can we do this? Uh, don't tell them no, and we take it back to them. And next thing you know, they've implemented a new solution for our customers to help benefit them and bring some new things to the market. It's been really exciting to see. Oftentimes it's customers that come to us with great ideas and things that they see that uh, would help them with their jobs. It was customer driven from the beginning. Uh, well, we know what you've done and how you've done it. What would you like to do? Our customers don't have to send out a technician if something's down. They could go and at a glance, look at all the devices in their field. They're all connected and all have reports on, on what's going on with the system. So it makes it easier for them to see everything at a glance and then react according. Our customers are able to communicate with intersections, locations, vehicles, cell towers, anything you want to, they can see it when they're on their smartphone at their home in the office. 
It's really changed things. When you look at connected vehicles, it excites us all, but they don't get into the game of DSRC versus cellular. They, they do a dual system. And we're deploying it. We've put 53 of those systems out in Alpharetta, Georgia. Coming out with your own system allows us as a supplier to put out more emergency vehicle preemption systems, to put out more intersections with these type of units that bring the connectivity to a citizen who's driving its vehicle. With the RSU, they say they can do emergency vehicle preemption a thousand feet back. That's great. Applied information can, can provide it a mile back, you know, two miles back from an intersection, you can be preempting intersections. The, the value of, of being able to uh, preempt a normal operation of a traffic signal was not seen as anything but a problem for the traffic people to have to deal with, something else to maintain and not see the uh, safety and the uh, benefit to the community. And that has changed over the years. The, the municipalities and counties and states have become more aware that yeah, that there's some benefit here. But then the technology really wasn't what it needed to be. It was line of sight product. Um, there were a lot of difficulties with it. But with the technology and the advances and uh, the superiority of the technology now, you can do so much more and uh, better benefit the agency and you're doing it for less money. Their team of engineers and their new facility, the IATL, there's a lab at your disposal uh, anytime you need it. It is a shining place for us in our industry and it's uh, close by that we can take people. With that lab there, it makes them a better company, makes better product. When you're partnering with AI, you are gonna be challenged, but there's a, there's a comfort, there's a peace there that, that we will prevail, we will do what we say we do. One of my employees, I won't name the name, uh, said, gosh, y'all must have been having a terrible meeting. It sounded like everybody's mad at one another. No, it was two passionate groups discussing and, and trying to come up with solutions, but, but knowing and just speaking honestly with one another. And uh, they've got their good idea and we've got ours. And, and so you, it's just iron sharpening iron, the exchange of information. And then at the end, boy, we've accomplished something. This was, this was good, but it, it's not we're trying to, uh, but it's a good, honest and open relationship and we, and based on trust. It began with a handshake with Brian and I. And, um, but we had that initial connection. Well, I can, I can trust this man and vice versa. So it's been a, um, like I said, it's been refreshing. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to have uh, come into their orbit. It is a neat experience. Instead of being one of those people that's saying, oh man, I wish I was on that car. I wish I was on that ride. Well, cause of applied information, you know, people are looking at what we're doing. They're trying to catch up with us. And so it's a this great partnership. It's really interesting when you talk about applied information with a customer. Oftentimes there are things and they're just they're flying by their head, and then you can see that moment where they they get it and they get this is what I need, this is the way I can go about it. And if you think about traffic engineers and their jobs from a day-to-day -day operation, and this, this struck me a couple of years ago when we first did the traffic signals that would give you the SPAT information, and I was sat in a car, and it told me how long it would be before the light would change. And I thought, you know, that's a really new and different world. And I thought, you know, traffic engineer, he goes to his job, or anybody in transportation, oftentimes, they're working on a curb and gutter, or they're, talking about this kind of problem or they're trying to fix a pole that got knocked down by a drunk driver or whatever the case may be. And that, they don't really have anything at dinner that there's necessarily they're excited to talk about. But with applied information, the guy goes home and he tells his family, I sat in a car today and it told me how long it was before the traffic light was green. And it told me that I was about to hit a bicyclist or I was about to, uh, run into a pedestrian and that's exciting to see and that was what excited me about it. Who's your favorite guy at AI? <laughs> <laughs> I'm smarter than that. <laughs>